Hello and a warm welcome to our second modding tutorial for Bus Simulator 16. Today I want to show you how you can change textures of existing objects. I demonstrate this using new billboard textures. First of all, let's open up the Bus Simulator 16 folder in Windows Explorer. If there's no modding folder, you have to create one. This directory is where all modifications will be placed. So this is the place where we have to create our full of our modifications. So just create a new folder and name it Billboard Staging. In this staging folder we have to create our root folder for the modification. The name of the root folder will be displayed in the list of modifications in game. So let's create a new folder and name it Billboards Mod. Finally we need a folder for our texture files. Also, we need a texture.ini definition file. If you need more details about our modding content types, please check out our first modding tutorial. So next, please create a new text file for our definition and change the file extension to ini. We now define a general header in the same way as before. So let's create a property name, an active flag, and the base folder where our modification files are stored. In this case, the name of the folder is simply texture. Then save and close the file. Next, let's change to the texture folder where we have to put all the files which should override the in-game textures. Each in-game texture can be overwritten by a new file with the same file name. In the video description, you will find a download link for the texture mod pack. This package includes all the files which can be overwritten by your modification. I've already downloaded and extracted the package in my downloads folder, so let's take a look at the files. Now search for the billboard texture files and open the first one. You can use any graphics editor, but I recommend you to use paint.net. Now we can see the six different advertising motifs. Now click on File, Save As, and save the texture to our texture folder. And change the file format to PNG. Keep the default configuration and click on OK. We can now start replacing the original motifs with our own. In my documents folder I have prepared six sample motifs, which are open now in paint.net. With the image list in the upper area, you can switch between every image that is open. So let's switch to our main motif. It should be noted that there is a small difference between the motifs. When I select the middle motif, you will notice that the width of the selection is 684 pixels. The dimension of the original image is 2048 by 2048 pixels that cannot be divided by 3. So there are small differences regarding the width of the motifs. If we look at the upper row and select the motif in the middle, we notice that the width of the selection is 684 pixels while the width of the outer two is 682. In the bottom row, the left one has a width of 682 pixels, while the other ones have 683. Because my sample motifs has a dimension of 684 by 1024 pixels, I have to resize them now. After resizing, I can Select the entire motif with Ctrl A and copy it with Ctrl C and paste it with Ctrl V as usual. We follow the procedure for the other motifs, in this case for the construction simulator, but this is the only one where we don't have to resize the image because it's already 684 pixels.
a piece of advice. With your mouse wheel while holding the control key, you can zoom into the picture. After moving the selection pixel perfect, you can press the S key for changing the selection tool, in this case for deselecting. In the same way as before, we now copy and paste the other motifs, for example, an advertisement for SimuWeld. First, we have to resize the image and then copy and paste it to our original one. Repeat the procedure with the remaining motifs. After completion, please save the file. Let us take a look back what we have done. There is the new texture file for the advertisements. In the parent folder we will find the definition file. Let's open it again. There are properties for the name of this sub-modification. Also there's the active flag defining if our modification is active or not and the folder where our modification files are stored. Now it is time to start the game. Finally, I would like to show you how you can upload your modification to the Steam Workshop. Therefore, you need a tool called Steam Command Line Application. You will find the download link in the video description. You install the Command Line application by unzipping the zip file in a temporary folder or any other folder you like. If you have questions, please just look at the wiki page where you've downloaded the application. I recommend you to create a new work folder for the uploading process cause you have to create two files, one thumbnail file and another uploading description or definition file which contains information where to find the files which should be uploaded and so on. Let's take a look at the definition file. I've opened the file in Visual Studio Code. As you can see, this is a JSON file defining a workshop item. First, you have to define the app ID. This is the one for a bus simulator 16. After that, you have to set the folder path where your modification files are stored. Then there's the path for the preview file, which will be displayed in the workshop. This might be, for example, a screenshot, followed by a property for a visibility, where 0 stands for a public item, 1 for an item which is only visible to your friends, and 2 for a private one. Last but not least, there are properties for the title, the description, and change notes. Next, we will start the command line application. There, you have to log in, typing login, your username, and your password. If this is the first time you are using the Steam command line application, probably you have to um, enter a code which will be sent to you by email. This is also known as two-factor authentication. After the login was successful, a flashing cursor indicates that the console is ready. To upload our modification, now we have to enter workshop underscore build underscore item. In the Windows Explorer, while holding down the left shift key, right click on a VDF file and click copy as path. In the comment line, right click on the title bar and select edit and paste. Just press enter to start the upload. After the upload is completed successfully, you can close the command line tool. In the definition file of our workshop item you can now see a new property called published file ID that indicates that our upload was successful. That's it. In the next video I will show you how you can integrate your own 3D models 
to the Bus Simulator 16 City.